Hello friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So in this video, we will be implementing assignment number 4 of laboratory practice to cloud computing. So let's see the problem statement. So the problem statement is find a procedure to transfer the files from one virtual machine to the another virtual machine. So we have to just transfer one file from one virtual machine to the another virtual machine. So to implement this assignment, we will require some software. So let us take a look which softwares we are going to use. First software that we will need is virtual box and second one is virtual machine hard disk. So the link of these both is given in the description box. So for this VMDK file I have given the link of the website. Whenever you will go to that website this type of interface will be displayed. You have to scroll down to the la till uh, the end of this uh, page and you will see that version is 21.0 and virtual box okay so you have to download this file which is of about 509 mb okay you have to download this file next uh, we'll now start implementing this assignment so first of all we'll open virtual box okay so now i have opened the virtual box now we have to transfer the file from one virtual machine to the another so it means we will require two virtual machines so for creating virtual machines click on this new and give name to your virtual machine so for first virtual machine i'll give name as vm1 then from the type choose linux and from version choose ubuntu 64 bit click on next okay wait a minute uh, i have already some virtual machines inside that path so i'll delete them So now I will click on next ok so keep this memory as same default click on next and from hard disk choose use an existing virtual hard disk and then from this folder icon you have to choose whether you have created the or downloaded this vmdk file the link of the website ok so from the you have downloaded from the website then click on open and click on create. We have created VM1 virtual machine 1. Now we will create second virtual machine. So give name as VM2. Then from type choose Linux and version is 64 bit Ubuntu. Okay. Click on next. Click on next. Use an existing virtual hard disk file and then click on create. Now we have created VM1 and VM2 successfully. Now we have to set the NAT network. So for that go to the file. Click on preferences and then go to the network from this left pane and here you will see that NAT network so some of you might see that there are nothing inside this so you have to click on this plus sign and you will see that NAT network is added now click on OK now we have to individually set the VM1 and VM for this VM1 and VM2 the NAT network so for that click on first VM1 right click and go to the settings from the left pane click on network and from here attach to NAT select NAT network ok then click on ok similarly for the second VM we'll right click go to the settings from the network we'll select NAT network okay. now we have added the NAT network to each individual machine that is VM1 and VM2 now we'll start this VM1 and VM2 by double clicking on each of them or you can just select and click on this start so the name of the virtual machine uh, you can see at the top of the window that is vm1 running and vm2 running so it will take time to load these virtual machines you can cut these messages So the version of the virtual box that I am using is of older version that is 5.2.44 and the latest version for the virtual box is 6.1.34 and the version of this VMDK that I have I am using is of 18.04 and the link that I have given is of 18 point, oh sorry 16.04. You can check whether it's working or not. If it's not working, then please mention in the comment box. I'll share the link of this VMDK that I'm having with me. Okay. It will take some time. 
so the today's video will be uh, large because uh, we will be also discussing the basic questions with their answers at the end of this video so be there till the end of the video okay so now my virtual machines are ready so I have to log into both the virtual machines so first of all I will log into this VM1 so here you have to give the login uh, user ID as vagrant v a g r a n t okay. and the password is also same as vagrant vagrant hit enter so I have logged into the VM1 similarly I log to the VM2 so give the username as vagrant password is also as vagrant all in lower case and you have to enter okay so now I have logged into both the machines now what I have to do is I have to first create the file so before that I'll check the IP addresses of both the machines so for that you have to click uh, write the command as if config and press enter similarly I'll proceed to the second VM2 with if config command so if config okay so you have to verify here one thing that the inet or the IP address of both the machines is different okay so here you can see that inet is 10.0.2.16 for this VM2 and for the VM1 it is 10.0.2.17 okay. okay so now we'll proceed with the next command in VM1 okay in the VM1 machine so the next command is to check whether there are already previous files inside this VM machine so for that it is ls okay so no files it, because it has not displayed any of the file name after giving the ls command okay so now the next task is to create the file so for that type touch space the name of the file so I'll write here yogesh dot txt and I'll hit enter okay so now I have created the file now I have to see whether there is some content inside this file or not so for that I am giving the command as cat yogesh dot txt okay so the no data is displayed so it means the file is blank now we'll add some content inside this file so for that we have the command as nano space name of the file in which you want to add content and hit enter okay so now the editor will be open so where we can write the content inside this file so I'll write now content such as hello all I am Yogesh and then uh, I'll write some more content like uh, we are performing assignment 4 and 4 okay so I have written some content inside this now we have to click Control S so that our file will be saved and then we have to click Control X okay so now you can see that we are now ready to type our next command okay so now next command is to transfer the file okay so we have created the file we have written the content inside the file now we have to transfer it to the VM2 so before that we'll check whether there is there are some files inside this VM so for that we have ls command so ls enter we'll see that no file is displayed so it means the directory is empty now we'll transfer our file okay so from this VM1 first verify whether the content is there inside the file or not so for that we have cat command so cat and then file name with extension and press enter see now our file is displaying that is hello all I am Yogesh we are performing assignment 4 here you can see here you can see okay the content that we have written is displayed it means our content is successfully written inside the file okay so now we'll transfer the file so for that we have the command as scp then write the name of the file you want to transfer that is yogesh.txt space vagrant and then at the rate and then after at the rate we have to mention the IP address of the VM2 
so f here you can get the IP address of VM2 as inet 10.0.2.16 we have to write this inside this okay so for that I'll write 10 dot 0 dot 2 dot 16 and then you have to go colon then slash then home then slash vagrant v a g r a n t okay. so here we are sending our file yogesh.txt to the vm2 inside the home slash vagrant directory now hit enter so now it is asking for the authentication and it asking whether you want to continue so you write yes now it asking for the password so password is vagrant hit enter okay. so now it will transfer our file yes so now it successfully transferred our file yogesh.txt from uh, from this virtual machine to the second virtual machine okay it's 100% pro process is done now we'll verify whether it's transferred or not so in vm2 type command as ls ls and then hit enter so see now my yogesh.txt file is there now write cat space the name of the file with extension to see whether their contents are there or not so see here the content that we have written inside this vm1 is displayed inside this vm2 hello all i am yogesh we are performing assignment 4 so in this way we have transferred file from vm1 to vm2 so now if you want to transfer file from vm2 to vm1 then you have to just perform the same steps that we have performed to transfer the files from vm1 to vm2 just you have to change the ip address in the scp command and you have to write the ip address of this virtual machine vm1 that's the difference only when we want to transfer files from vm2 to vm1 now next uh, what we'll do is now we'll close this virtual machine because we have successfully transferred our files and we'll move to the question and answer se uh, section so for this click on cut here power of the machine click ok here also power of the machine click ok now both the machines are off now from here you have to remove this virtual machines so from here right click and click on remove so now here you can see one message that doing this will remove the files containing machines virtual hard disk if they are not in use by another machine so if you click on delete all files then it will delete your vmdk file that you have stored in your on your machine okay so here i have stored no v, uh, vmdk file so it will be deleted if i choose from here delete all files okay. from both if i choose delete all files then it will be deleted okay so see it is deleted so make sure that you take the backup of that file inside another location so that you can use it for the further okay so now you have to close this virtual box okay now we'll move towards the question and answer section so these are some basic questions that we'll be discussing based upon the practical so the first question is what is oracle virtual box okay so virtual box is what it is a cross-platform virtualization tool and it allows us to run multiple operating systems at the same time here we are running two same operating systems that is linux ubuntu 64-bit operating system at the same time then next is what is virtual machine or vm so it is a digital version of the physical computer and it allows to run an operating system that behaves like a completely separate computer in an app window on a desktop so as we have seen that we have opened the two vm1 and vm2 and which will look like uh, the app that is open okay if we open any app then we'll see that uh, the window is there and inside that we uh, perform the operations on the app like right? so like that the if we use the virtual machine then it will run the operating system like an app window okay so that is about the virtual machine now next is what is virtual machine disk okay virtual machine disk so that is vmdk so the extension for these files is .vmdk and vmdk is a file format that describes containers for virtual hard disk drives to be used in virtual machines 
as our physical computers have the hard disk similarly for virtual machine virtual hard disk is there and they, it means they are actual hard disk drive for the virtual guest operating system so in this case is vm that is linux now next question is what is ip address so ip stands for internet protocol address and it is a series of numbers that uniquely identifies any device on a network as we have given the ip address of the vm2 inside the scp command so that we can identify these that uh, vm2 uniquely so that is means what we are using the ip address because it uniquely identifies any device on a network and our network is nat network now next is what is nat network so nat network stands for network address translation with the name you can understand that we are translating the network address okay and it is used to provide different private ip addresses to different users inside an organization's private network so let's understand this with the help of this diagram so see here i am having the router and here there are three machines which is consider them as there are three developers developer 1 developer 2 and developer 3 and they are all working in a same organization inside a private network here there is a router and here is the internet access or you can say that we are browsing or we are sending request to the server for accessing internet okay so here we are accessing internet so here you can see that we are having one public ip address to this router so whenever we want to access the internet we will need a registered public ip address then and then only we will be able to access the internet and see if these three developers are working in the same organization then it's not feasible to provide them the different public ip address to each of them so that's why we provide them as private ip address which is assigned to each developer and private IP address is different for each developer so whenever they want to search or they want to access the internet the request will be sent to the router then this router will map their private IP address to the public IP address and then it will give access to the internet so even though they are having different IP private IP address the private IP address will not be known to this server Okay, because the router will map this private IP address to the public IP address and using this public IP address only the internet is accessed. So this is the basic concept regarding the NAT network which is important in this assignment. We have assigned the private networks to both the, both the, assign, uh, both the VMs that is VM1 and VM2 and the main that is router is inside the NAT network which is having some subnet mask. Now we'll see the next what is subnet mask okay so subnet mask allows to identify the network part and host part of an ip address so it allows the identification of network part and host part of an ip address basically the ip address consists of host part and the network part so here we have to remember that for each host on a network will have same network part but different host part Starting 24 bits that is 192.168.1.14 consider this is one IP address and the first 24 bits that is 192.168.1 is network part and the host part is point uh, after the point that is 14 okay so this host part will be different for the different host but this network part will be same for the different users okay. in a private network now the next is what is the use of ls touch cat nano and scp commands so first is ls so ls is used to list all the files and directories then next is the touch command touch command is used to create a file create a new file we have created yogesh.txt file then cat command is used to show content inside the file then next is the nano so nano it is an ed editor to edit the content inside a fa file okay it is an editor now next is the scp command so scp command is used to copy files from one virtual machine to the other so these are some basic questions regarding practical uh, assignment number four if you have any doubt you can mention in the comment section so that's it for the today if you like the video please like share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such videos so that's it for today we'll see in the next video thanks for watching